Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, we're showcasing small boats that fish big. These are center consoles in the 20 to 23 foot range that let you drift the flats, fish the inlet, and troll the Gulf Stream. Some key features to look for in this class are a single outboard that is economical to operate and delivers all of the performance you need, plenty of storage both under the seating and built into the deck, a center console large enough to offer additional storage and have a head, ample freeboard will give you a feeling of security when offshore a swim ladder, especially if you like to dive as much as you do fish. Add to that a transom door and you have much easier access in and out of the water. Stern seating is another plus which adds to the boat's versatility. A bait well in a boat this size is a necessity, not an option. As you spend more time honing your blue water skills, these boats are large enough for you to take a few more anglers with you. If you dive, you have plenty of room for several divers and gear. It's not all about fishing in deep water though. Center consoles fewer than 23 feet are equally at home in the intracoastal. You can drift the deeper grass flats and bays, casting for trout and redfish, and when the snooks stack up in the inlet, you can target them in anything short of a gale, which may make a center console in the 20 to 23 foot range the best boat for you. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as we feature three center consoles that are as versatile as they are practical. Release 208RX, the Dusky 227, and the Seaborn SX239. They'll be conducting walkthroughs, test drives, and reviewing key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to this episode of Best Boat. I'm Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sports and Magazine. And I'm Rick Riles, program director of Florida Sports and Radio. What we've got for you in this episode, we're looking at center consoles that'll be your first step out into the blue water arena. Yeah, we've seen a lot of center console boats, Dave, earlier, but they were all designed to do a lot of things inshore, offshore. These boats, whereas you can fish them inshore, they are born to be offshore boats. Really, and it's the natural progression that somebody would make. Let's say they started in a smaller boat and they really want to start venturing outside that inlet. This size boat can still be pulled by a small pickup truck, you know, a half ton or something like that, or a small SUV, but it's got some real big wheels to get you out there and let you chase dolphin in the, in the uh, blue water. I tell you what, those trout, redfish, and flounder look really good till you see dolphin, wahoo, and tuna, don't they? Well, there's nothing like it. I mean, there's so many different species you can fish for offshore. You can obviously troll for dolphin, and there's kingfish. You can wahoo, you know, troll high speed. You got sailfish. You can bottom fish for grouper and snapper. It's just a lot different fishery that you've got once you leave the inlet. And you know what a lot of people don't think? Every time they think about a bigger boat, they think about a better fisherman, they think about more fish. Oh, let's follow that big Viking over this kind of stuff. You know what? The fish sees the bait. That's it. He doesn't know if it's hooked to a 20-foot center console <laughs> or a 72-foot sport fisherman. So you can be every bit as effective with your offshore fishing with these boats if you do it right and you're careful. The three boats we brought today, I'm really excited because they're three similar in range as far as size, but they're really, really different when you look at the bottom design, when you look at how they're powered, and also when you look at your gunnel height, what you're talking about. They're, they're different, so it lets you see the difference between going with a larger 23 or a smaller 21. There's a big difference just in those three size ranges. Sure there is, and, and initially you would think, if I'm going out in the ocean, I want all the high size I can get. I want it, you know, but when you go to a lower sided boat, think about how much easier it is to reach the water. Think about if you're diving, getting in and out of the boat. There's a lot more factors than you think. And we'll say it with this series too, what's the best boat? The best boat for what you want to do is the one you need to get. All right, Rick, well, we've got the Dusky 22.7. It's in the water, tied at the dock. Let's go take a look. All at right, it. let's go. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This segment is brought to you by Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. Florida Sportsman, the source for fishing in the outdoors since 1969. Florida's largest fishing and outdoors magazine. Year-round TV with real-time Florida Sportsman and Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Florida's number one online resource. Over 8 million page views a month. Live reports from the water every Saturday morning. Hands-on instruction, seminars and demonstrations. Books, charts and more. Become part of the Florida Sportsman community today. 
Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week, we'll be featuring center consoles in the 20 to 23 foot range. Dave and Rick started off with the Dusky 227. All right, Rick, we're aboard the Dusky 227. Our overall length is 22 feet 7 inches, but part of that's bracket. You still have a lot of room inside the boat because the bracket allows you to put the motor further off and it's not hanging on the transom, so it's not taking up any room back there. You know, it's funny you mentioned the bracket, Dave. The first bracket boat I ever saw, in fact, I'm pretty sure the first bracket boat in Florida was by Ralph Brown of Dusky. He invented moving the motor back to increase the performance of the boat, not to mention a great platform if you swim, dive, lobster, whatever you do overboard. Well, really, the bracket, too, gives you some more displacement. That helps to actually carry the extra weight of the engine back there. All right, well, they've been building this boat for a long time, but they've made refinements over the years to what it is right now. This type of construction with the ring deck gives you a lot more room inside. Well, it sure does, Dave, because people love the way an interliner boat looks, but they so often forget it takes up room. You know where it becomes important? Passing by your console. You got two people going by the same time, you're very thankful that you don't have an interliner because it gives you more room to work with. Well, not only that, We've got good rod storage here that's under the gunnel, it's out of the way, and your rod holders don't drain into the hull. They drain onto the deck and the water just goes out the scupper. That's right, and you notice all the boats anymore are self bailing In fact, you and I were talking at lunch today about boats sinking at the dock from water getting in and the bilge pump's not working. It's not a factor anymore, it doesn't happen. Water gets in this boat, shoots out the scuppers. Well, in fact, this boat doesn't have a bilge. There's not a, there's not a plug in the hull of this boat. Dusky doesn't put plugs in their boat. No, oh, you're exactly right, Dave. That's a huge safety factor, too, by the way. Let's look at some of the inside features in this boat. All right, well, starting back here at the transom where we are now, I love the fact that they've got this flip-up stern seat. You Best see this seating on, on the boat. It I is. You see it on a lot of boats. We've seen it on a lot of the boats that we've tested already this year. But you know what? It's practical. It's there when you want it, but when you don't, it's out of the way. It's flanked on either side by storage boxes. On this side, you've got a place to put tackle box or anything you want. On this side, they've got their fuel water separator, so it's so easy to get to, you open it up and it's right there. Gosh, how many boats are, are especially today with ethanol being such a factor in our gas and stuff, how many boats get in trouble over having water in their fuel? It is so much easier to check that with it being right there and accessible. You can look at it every trip. It never backs up on you without you realizing it. Okay, move up here toward the helm. I like the seat. I mean, we see a leaner type seat on a lot of these boats, but this is more than just a leaner. It's a comfortable seat. Let me tell you what else it is that most boats don't have. Under your leaner is your cooler that you can da -da -da -da, actually open. You know what, too, where you were stepping this hatch? We talk about cast net storage all the time. Well, guess what? In this boat, we actually do have a cast net stored on it, and it's out of sight, but when you need it, you can get to it really, really easy. This whole genre of boats, and this Dusky in particular, does one thing great, it offshore fishes. And you can keep up with, on a pretty day, let me tell you what, you can put as many fish on this boat as anybody's boat. Okay, now, work your way up to the bow and see how much room we have up here. I love this factor. This boat has a little bit of a Carolina flair to the hull. That gives you a huge bow to work with. All right, now explain the advantage of a Carolina flare. Everybody hears, oh, my boat's got a Carolina flare, all that. What's the big deal about a Carolina flare? Well, all you have to do is look at the hull and you can see. The hull itself flares out and it does two things. One, it gives you a lot of room up here in the bow, but underneath, when the water hits, it's got to push and go out, which is going to give more displacement and more lift to the boat. So if you're in a following sea, having that flare is really going to do well. And I'm real thankful that this cushion is removable here because for me, at my age, it's hard to stand up there and be stable. I'd rather have solid footing. If you've got two daughters in college that are coming home for the weekend, they want to sunbathe up here. So literally with this boat, you can have it either way you want to take the cushion off or leave it on. Well, there again, that's the beauty of dealing factory direct. You can tell them exactly what you want on the boat and that's how you get it because your way of fishing, my way of fishing is going to be different. We're going to use the boat different. We may actually even do the same thing, but on different days. So maybe one day you want the cushion, maybe one day the cushion stays home in the garage. Yeah, if you have to get into a tournament that is going to be fished in heavy weather, this may very well be the best boat for you because we've got a big high bow that's going to take big seas better than a low center boat. All right, Rick, let's do a quick recap of the Dusky 227. Like we had said earlier, this is a lot bigger boat than a little 19 or 20 foot center console that you may have started out with in the bay. This is a boat that you really can bust that inlet with. You can, Dave. We can call it a pocket rocket because it can fish offshore 
with the big boats, it's still very manageable for two people and it's still very trailerable and very affordable. Right, single outboard, single 175, plenty of power. I'm not even sure you need that much power on this boat, but you can load it down with people, load it down with gear, and you're still gonna have good performance. And it's what we call a fire hose boat, Dave. You bring it in, one of the things I love about it, you can wash this boat, park it, you're done. It's in great shape. It's simple, it's functional. I love the Dusky 227. Stay tuned for this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Welcome back. Here's Dave and Rick with this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. Dave East, you're the boating editor of Florida Sportsman Magazine. I know you've seen some fiberglass damage by coming into the dock wrong or tying up in a marina wrong. Oh yeah, absolutely. When you approach a dock, you want to approach it at a slow enough speed to where you can get to the dock against the wind of the current, but not so fast that if you hit the dock, you're going to do any damage to the boat. That's right, and you never know when you're going to lose power. So you always want to be going into the wind and into the current, because you lose power, you're going to crunch into that dock. It's a whole lot easier to glide in slowly. Right, and as you tie off, Obviously you want a bow line and a stern line, but one of the most important lines is a spring line. Dave, you're absolutely right. Explain the function of a spring line. Well, basically a spring line is either going to go from the middle of the dock to the stern cleat or to the bow cleat, or maybe you've got a, uh, a uh, spring cleat on the boat, and then you'll take it forward or you'll take it aft. And what it does, it just positions the boat. It holds it on the place on the dock where you want it to go, because if you use just a bow on a stern line, the boat will still be able to drift forward and drift aft. And one tip that I'd like to tell everybody is, if you go to a marina where it's a strange marina, you haven't been there before, maybe you're going to spend the night, maybe you're in the islands or whatever, go check on your boat a couple of times a night. Get up, walk over there, check your lines, make sure they're tight, but make sure you've got enough slack so when you come in in the morning, the boat's not sitting on an angle. You said it best earlier when you said make it the last thing you say goodnight to before you go to sleep. All right, Rick, this is the Seaborn SX239. She's 23 feet, 9 inches long, the largest boat of the three that we brought. Dave, and it is, and it's got a big boat feel to it and big boat features. I mean, you don't often see seating up in the bow like this on a 23 center console. You don't often see a, a windlass to pull your anchor with. There's just a lot of, uh, it's in the same class, the 21 to 23s, but this boat actually has more of a big boat offshore feel, partly because she's got so much more freeboard. Her sides are real high. All right, this bow seating package, it's an optional thing that you can add to the boat because it is put in after the boat is built. The backrest are removable, so are the cushions. So if you want to use it as a casting deck or to get on and off the boat a lot easier, it's a good feature to have because if you go to crawl up on that bow as high as it is without this, that's a large, large step. You're a long ways up there. It really is. Other features I like, this built-in handrail, it's, a, it's not only there for safety, but it's just the, the security of going up to either mess with the anchor or go forward. Let's say you're going to tie off to a dock. Having something to hang on to without that great big gaudy bow rail up here, it's really nice. Dave, you know, this seating up here is nice, but you and I both know that if you're running, this is the least comfortable place to sit. Do they make a version without the seating up here? Well, they do. This is the classic that we're in now. They also make the open. With the open, the seating is removed, and they replace it with a coffin box. So if you want to take this boat tournament fishing, and you catch a nice big kingfish or cobia or a wahoo or something like that, now you have a really big fish box up here in which to put it now, in. Now, that's a perfect scenario for this boat for me. Well, we do have two fish boxes built in the floor on either side and the back. So let's say you wanted a boat that did a little bit of both. You wanted to party a little bit, you wanted to fish a little bit, go to the sandbar, you wanted some versatility. You still could keep your bow seating and have fish boxes in the stern. You come back here to the console, you can easily put a head in here and mount any kind of electronics you want on here with easy access. You know, and sometimes it's the little things I look at when I look at different boats to see if the manufacturer did. If you look at this, it's a little fiddle or tray or whatever you want to call it. It's something really insignificant, but it's really a nice option to have. No, it's not insignificant. A cell phone stays in there. Exactly. Okay? I'm notorious talking on the phone, setting my phone up on the console, going to fight a fish or something. Next thing I hear is flat when it hits the deck. 
The seat, very similar to the other boats that we've seen already so far. Something I love on this boat, because I dive almost as much as I fish, is the fact that I've got a transom door so I can easily get in and out of the water. See, Mr. Boat Builder, you walk right past this. This is ground zero for a fisherman. You're going to rig your baits, you're going to get ready to fish, cut them up if you're bottom fishing, sew them if you're trolling. You can do it right here on this starboard cutting board. See, now when I take a boat out, a lot of times we'll be with the wife and kids, they're going to notice cup holders, something that you missed. Another thing that they're going to like is the fact that I've got a built-in freshwater shower right here at the transom. So you come in, you got salt water on you, you spray off. So here again, it's one boat that can do both things. All right, Rick, you know, we've seen a lot of flip-up stern seating on the boats that we've tested so far in the series. The one thing that Seaborn did that I absolutely love, it gave you easy access to all your rigging. And let me tell you how important that is, okay? If you can't get back there, you don't lift that hatch. You don't check. In fact, I'm such a nut about it. I check as soon as I leave the dock every morning because we're also dependent on our electric bilge pumps. We don't know if they malfunction. I know because I can check down in the bilge every morning make sure there's no water there. Now, over in this corner, you got a live well. May not be the size live well that you crazy fishermen go after, but you know what? It's plenty big and it's round. And uh, you hit on it right there, it's round. Any corner in a live well is trouble, Dave. A fish has to keep swimming to get oxygen through his gills. He can do it in here because it's perfectly round and it doesn't put him in a corner and let him run out of air. Well, you know what, let's recap this boat because, I mean, we could spend an entire show just on this boat. There are a lot of really, really nice features. You got hoss pipes built in. You have this console that's got a step down where it's got a hit. There's enough room in there, even for somebody much taller than you, <laughs> to stand up inside the console. All right, it's the larger boat of the three that we brought, but the features that we've seen on this boat, you normally don't see until you get into a 28 or 32 foot center console. You're right, Dave. How, how about the windlass? Man, do I hate pulling anchors push a button that comes up. You don't see that on a lot of 23 center consoles. So if you want to fish just you and your buddy or you and your wife, you're going to spend your time offshore. You got a serious case of blue water fever. This is an excellent representative of a 23 foot offshore boat. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When you buy a Florida fishing license, you support research, conservation minded fishing, law enforcement, habitat restoration, hatcheries, access to fishing, and programs that connect kids to the outdoors. It's an investment in the future. I'm Chase Franco, and I do. I don't need a fishing license, but I want one. So say, I do too, and get your Florida fishing license. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew stayed at Pirates Cove Resort and Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week, we're featuring center consoles in the 20 to 23 foot range. Dave, I love this. This is the release 28. 28, this boat's a lot shorter than 28 feet. Huh? No, it's not. I use the same measure that tells me I'm six feet tall. This boat's 28. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wish. 20 foot, eight inches. But let me tell you something. Maybe a little smaller than the other two. It's sweet. Here's something I love about offshore boats as opposed to bay boats. I'm not as young as I used to be. Being able to walk all the way forward and still being deep in the boat is super important to me. Being able to gaff a fish here without hopping up on a platform is really, really easy. If you want to cast, Dave, these cushions come off. You've still got casting platforms on each side. Well, one thing we've said all the way through the series is every boat's a compromise. What I believe Release has done is they've given you a good compromise between a guy who wants to have access all the way to the bow, either gaff a fish or to have security, but yet, if I'm taking the kids and the wife out and I want a comfortable place to sit, I haven't given up anything. Right, and they're sitting on a fish box full of fish. That is a fully insulated, good long box. And let me tell you what I like about it, Dave. The whole lid opens, okay? When you're trying to control a cobia or a dolphin, boy, is it a lot easier to slip him in there when you've got a hatch cover that big. This bow area of this boat was thought out by a fisherman. Well, and somebody who likes to take the family out for a cruise. You've got the integrated handles that we like so much, and as you move back, there's some more features that you're gonna love, whether you take the boat out for family or you take the boat out for fishing. One thing that most women are going to look for in a boat is cup holders. And this boat's got four of them right here on the bow where they're going to be sitting. And they're integrated. You never have to worry about losing them. You're sitting right there, keeping your cold drink right there. It's really a neat feature. Love the size of this door into the head. 
all the space you've got, easy battery access, even an optional electric head. Dave, release is good thinking, certainly didn't stop at the console. Here's a great idea. The top of the console is recessed. What does that mean? Nothing falls back and falls off. What else they did? They cut a drain right here. So any water that lands on the console goes off to the side and doesn't end up getting on you, or more importantly, your flush mounted electronics that you got a whole lot of room for. More permanent drink holders right here. Simple, basic, functional, a great console. Well, one of my favorite things to do is yellowtail down in the keys. This is something I've never seen before. You've got a built-in bucket. This is where I would put my chum. It's right here. I can take the chum, I can put it over. When you pull that nasty chum bag up out of the water, you can drop it right in here. It's out of sight. Don't leave your chum bag in the bucket. That actually makes it a whole lot easier to clean it out. All you gotta do is lift the bucket out and wash it. Well, you can. Not only that, I've got access down to my bilge. If I have to work on some systems down there, this is a lot easier way to get to them. Don't get caught up on the size boat you're on. You spread these outriggers out, your spread's as wide as anybody. It makes you much more fishable. Well, what I like about these outriggers, you can operate them from down here. This is another thing that people need to look for when they're looking for features on the boat. Most of the time, you've got to stand up on the gunnel, you've got to reach on top, and you've got to put your outriggers out. If you've ever tried to do that in rough conditions, it's really hard. The fact that you can grab this handle and swing them out just makes it so much easier. Dave, Dave, isn't it funny now, walking in the transom, how just about everybody is now doing these stern seats. But I really like what Release did. This is actually three different seats. So if you've got somebody that wants to cast off of there, you can lay those down while somebody else sits right here. It's not all or nothing. You can break it out three different ways. Well, this is more than a seat. This is a couch. You can put four people across this thing comfortably. I haven't seen a boat this small in length with this wide of a couch yet. This is the first one. Eight six is a lot of beam on a 20 foot boat, Dave. And let me tell you what it enables you to do. You've got twin live wells, okay, on each side of the boat where they belong. That balances out your weight factor. Remember, water weighs almost eight pounds a gallon. If you've got 20 gallon wells, you fill up one, you've got 160 extra pounds on one side. Work with both live wells, you'll find it a whole lot easier to trim your boat out. All right, for a quick wrap up on the Release 208. It's the smallest boat we've brought by numbers. But really, it's a little bit larger boat than what the Dusky is, because the Dusky includes the bracket, and they don't. They take the entire LOA into consideration. Well, you're right. And let me tell you, how many of us started on a 20-foot center console boat? I mean, that was the original offshore center console boat in Florida. But man, there's a lot of refinements in this one. They've taken everything smart about the old boats and brought all the new technology and all the new ideas. There's a lot to like on this Release 208. So if somebody's looking to get out into blue water but doesn't want to take that leap into a lot larger center console, this may be their best boat. If you're looking for the versatility of fishing inshore, offshore, or taking the family out for a day on the water, a center console in the 20 to 23 foot range may just be the best boat for you. If you want more information on the boats that you've seen here today on this show or any of the boats that we tested in the Best Boat series, Go to our website at floridasportsman.com, click on the boating page, and look at the best boat link. Or we'll see you back here next week on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Each month, turn to Florida Sportsman for the best in boating and fishing coverage.